frigid ocean waters. I can feel them already. Calm, calm. Just listen to me for a moment. There's something I need to tell you. The reason I worked for House Farley, Bernadetta, was to kill you. Ha! I knew it. I always knew you were out to kill me. Sink me into the deep, dark, freezing depths. Hold on. House Farley? But why? As you well know, theirs is one of the six great noble houses, the true rulers of the Empire. And you're the heir, with the crest. There were tons of people who wanted you wiped out. Like people who want to eradicate House Farley. Or a relative who wants the glory for themselves. That particular breed of treacherous nobility is the kind that'd hire a kid to do their dirty work. The first thing that kid would do? Get close to the target by befriending her. Find an in through, say, an assistant gig? This kid you're mentioning sounds real. That was you, wasn't it? Yours truly. My biggest mistake? Getting to know you. I crept into your room one night and readied my blade. The whole thing had been a breeze. Up until that moment, I couldn't bring myself to do it. While I hovered there, hesitating, your father came in. You know the rest. Why are you telling me all this? I'm so confused. Because I want you to look at it objectively. I was hired to kill you. Your father protected you from me. A filthy assassin. He was looking out for you. You're lucky to have a father who cares for you enough to do that. Father protected me? He protected me. Yeah, why would I lie? At this point, I figure it's you who hates me, and not the other way around. I don't hate you, Yuri. But I mean, I do feel weird. But I don't know how to feel. I just... Can't we just be friends? Like back then? You want to be friends... with... me? The reason you couldn't kill me was because we were friends, right? Well... You were my first friend. My very first friend. The first person who played with me. The first person who went on adventures with me. The first... And you were the first friend I had to baby that much. What do you mean? Well, even so, you were the first friend who cared for me. The whole thing was probably a sham anyway. Though you know, even if it was, I did have a lot of fun with you. <laughs> I knew it! All right, Yurikins, isn't it about time you let go of this grudge? <sighs> I'm sorry I dragged you out onto the stage, but I can't believe you're still holding it against me. I bear no grudge. Then why do you get this stony look and face the other way any time you catch a glimpse of me? <sighs> oh, Ladybird. Truth be told, when I see you, it reminds me of my own self-loathing. Of my past. Huh. I didn't know you were carrying something like that. You rose up from your hardships and became the lead singer for a prestigious opera, all on your own. While I made my way through the world by licking the boots of wretched nobles. Watching you on stage from the sidelines. It wasn't until recently that I felt a real sense of accomplishment in my life. But recalling that first pivotal moment when I saw you on stage, you were brilliant. You shone like nothing I'd ever seen. Whenever I see you, Lady Bird, I'm reminded of that moment. And in that moment, I had never felt so filthy and unlovable in all my life. That's why you don't like singing? There's got to be more to it than that. Back then, the Imperial capital was swarming with disgusting nobles. All of them vying for your attention. For the love of the Dorothea. Many were willing to compromise with an inferior substitute. If they couldn't have you, perhaps someone else was capable of singing just as sweetly. You do what you must to chase your dreams. You say it left you filthy and unlovable. 
But my life didn't leave me unscathed either. There's not much love left in what I do. There was once, of course. As a child, I lived for singing. No matter how hard times got, I always had that. I counted myself so lucky to have met Manuela and joined the opera. But the more I sang for a living, the less certain I was that I loved it anymore. You're a tricky one to assess. I can't tell if you're too wise or too naive for your own good. Whether or not your heart's in it now, you certainly didn't appear to hate it back then. I'd never seen you beam so brightly as you did when you helped me train for the performance. <sighs> you might be onto something. I felt genuinely happy in that moment. You just lost your spark for singing. Nothing more. It's how I feel about it in a way. How about this? Why not join an opera that doesn't have dealings with nobles? That's... a great idea, actually. We'll start something new together, you and me. I don't know about all that now. The world is full of people who fell through the cracks just like us. We'll take them in whenever we can and aim to become Fodlin's premier opera company. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I was this fired up. Though, we'll have to table it until after the war. Hmm. Huh. Our own one-of-a-kind traveling opera. You know, that does sound fairly thrilling. I have no doubts it could help deepen our pockets. <laughs> Leave it to you to take all the romance out of it. But I know you're an idealist deep down. Takes one to know one. I must say. I do enjoy seeing your mischievous side at work. I'll take that as a compliment. I could say the same for you, too. It's exactly why I'm comfortable sharing this dream with you. Finally, you've arrived. I was beginning to get impatient. Have a seat. What are you on about? I'm not on about anything. Let's have dinner together, Yuri. What is this? Did you make it? I did. It's a simple dish. My culinary skills are fairly basic. Hold on. What exactly is this about? You cook for me, I cook for you. That's how this works. It may not be quite as elegant a meal as that of a Drestian or Lester cuisine, but the food of Fargus is delicious nonetheless. Thank you for the meal. It was lovely, Ingrid. The flavors were... nostalgic. Reminded me of when I lived with my mother and the Elder. I was actually born in a poor town in Fargus. The flavors in this dish remind me of those days. Uh, sorry. I didn't mean to compare a meal made by nobility with the meager food I grew up eating. No offense taken. To tell the truth, although my house is a noble one, it's also lacking in money. Our territory was struck by famine, and we ate whatever the land gave us, which wasn't much. We took what we could, just like everyone. I see. Well, I must say that your cooking is quite to my taste. Any meal made with so much thought and care is bound to be delicious. <laughs> Why, thank you! High praise indeed, from someone who knows their way around a kitchen. To survive in this world means to sharpen many skills. Whether it's cooking, or anything else, really. Although, I've got to say, I do enjoy cooking. And if my meals can bring a smile to someone's face, all the better. Celebrating victories with friends, sitting around a table with loved ones, watching someone enjoy the meal I made them, few things bring me more joy. Have you ever considered giving up being the Lord of the Underworld and becoming a chef instead? <laughs> a chef, huh? You know, that doesn't sound half bad. If you ever do, I'd come to your restaurant and eat whatever you'd whipped up every day. I'd like that very much. I'd work extra hard so I could see that lovely smile of yours. <laughs> you were just too much. I can hardly maintain my composure around you. Did I say something wrong? <laughs> Not at all, Yuri. Not at all. Hey, take this. 
Hmm? That smell. That sound. This is gold. A sizable stash of precious gold! What gives? Don't tell me you got your mitts on the church's vault. You fool. It's simply a reward. Nothing to get in a tizzy over. No way I can accept this, pal. Trust me, I haven't done anything to deserve it. Just shut up and take it. Call it your fee for providing me with information. What you told me. The tale from your mother's homeland. It really helped me. Anyway, if you don't actually need it, I'm sure you'll find a use for it. Maybe take your mom out for a night in the town. Looks like you're insisting then. Fine, I'll use it to buy her some good grub. But I thought you didn't actually find any answers in my little tale. Not quite, but it helped me in other ways. I've stopped vexing myself over unimportant details, like who I am or who I think I might be. That's all fine and good, but is it really worth its weight in gold? This is coin we're talking about! Look, do you want it or not? Is there something else you'd prefer? <sighs> wow, that was one hell of a sigh. Look, you're better than me at thinking and betting, but right in this moment, you're the fool. You. Do I like gold? Yes. Do I want it? Need it? Yes and yes. While we're at it, I like brawling. Women too. But there's something that I care about even more than gold, fighting, and women. Any ideas? Oh, this is tough. Mm. Let me guess. Hopelessly losing every bet you place? A good drink? You really think highly of me, don't you? Dead wrong. It's having a bash bro. A friend to fight with and fight for. Seems I was a bit off base there. I guess to you, everyone is either an underling or a business associate. But with a bash bro, there's no such thing as an overdue loan. No hierarchies or other nonsense. It's someone to trust, both in and out of battle. Someone to share life's ups and downs with. I see. No need to reward a bash bro, I suppose. That's the ticket. I know you were born into a world of trickery and exploitation, but you don't have to live like that anymore. Now you've got me! I'm not accustomed to talks like this, I must admit. Hmm, how can I frame this? Nobody even knows my real name. Are you actually comfortable confessing such a warmth towards someone so... cold? Clearly. No matter who you are or what you've done, I care about you. That won't ever change. <laughs> now that is fresh. I told you my feelings and you laughed. <laughs> You're one of a kind, pal. I'm sorry. I've got to admit, I thought I'd heard it all. But you've managed to surprise me. It's the first time anyone has ever said something so sincere without trying to get something out of me. I could try to say it again with more swagger, if that helps. Nah, no need. Bash Bros. Has a nice ring to it. From here forward, we are forever Bash Bros, friend. I've got your back, pal. Remember when you mentioned briefly that you'd been in conference with some nobles? Did the topic of conversation happen to be me? I haven't the foggiest idea what you're talking about. Don't be coy with me. I recently received an offer of support from Count Karen. Bravo. Your dream of restoring your house is that much closer now, isn't it? We shall see. My response is on hold until I could confirm something first. Hmm? <laughs> you sound as befuddled as I feel. These are events you set in motion, are they not? I want only the truth from you. Lie to me and you shall be incinerated. That doesn't leave me much wiggle room, does it? All right, I'll tell you. So yeah, I might have been negotiating with some nobles. Maybe. Possibly. You do recall that I have nothing I can offer you in return, yes? <laughs> of course I know that. I just did what I needed to get what I wanted. Like always. Explain. All my life, I've known how to angle to get everything I've ever wanted. Money, social standing, the whole kid and caboodle. See? That's how the savage mockingbird lives. Ever since I was a kid, it's how I've done things. What does that have to do with... Wait, 
Are you admitting to being the Savage Mockingbird? Then I find myself wanting in on this house of yours. The one you've yet to rebuild. What? No, no, wait. You haven't yet answered my question about the Savage. Preened as this bird might be, his only home is a dark, wet back alley. As long as I'm me, nothing can change that. So, I figure, if I could leave that home of mine and live simply as Yuri, even if only for a while, you know, I might like somewhere proper to return to. Somewhere cozy, comfy even. Better than House Row, where last I left from. I'm not sure what you're insinuating here. I'll get your house back for you. And I only ask for one thing as payment. Once House Nouvelle is back in good standing, I want a home there. You mean, you wish to join House Nouvelle? But the only way to do that... Marriage. Bingo. Quick, easy, simple. You and I. Spouses! You heard me. It's a fine enough trade. What's the problem? I mentioned nothing about a problem. Where did you get that notion? I've always found you very useful, though I could do with less, much less, of your back talk. I suppose Milady doesn't want a rogue for a husband. <laughs> Can't handle all that is Yuri, hmm? No, no, but there is a procedure to this sort of thing. How can you join my house when I have none? What? You want to do things in order? How boring. I suppose we'll be lovers for now. Uh, you mock me! You mock me and I will not have it! Me? Mock? I'm being sincere. I'd never live out another dull day with you by my side. That is my only fear. A life spent by your side may be more taxing than I could stand. Seeing you so flustered provides endless entertainment. <laughs> So happy. Are you going back home or what? That came out of nowhere. Haven't you noticed there's a war going on? I can't leave now. Hmm, had a notice. Nope. Now that I have, will you head home once it's over? To check on your parents? No. Even after the war, I can't return. With my curse, I might destroy the whole village. I won't put them at risk like that. True. I want to say you could go there and everything would be dandy. The way things tend to shake out, though, it can be pretty hard not to sigh. What about you? You don't mind spending all this time away from... wherever you call home? Can't say I've spent much time thinking about it. Maybe after the war is over. I've got plenty to keep me occupied. If I drop things and head home, my people will lose respect for me. I can't have that. I see. I know I should visit home at some point. It's been more than a decade since I left, though. They probably think I died. They might. All the more reason for you to go back. I know you're scared. But if you keep your visit brief, it'll work out fine. I don't know about yours, but my mother would want to know that I'm okay. I suppose I could stop by for a short visit. That might be nice. Still worried? I can accompany you. I'm sure you'll find some use for me. Huh? You know you'll be so caught up in my lively conversations, you'll have very little time for sighing. Hmm... That plan could backfire. I might find the conversation boring, and then... That would never happen. I wouldn't allow for it. And on the off chance a beast does appear... Well, that'll clear up your boredom pretty quickly, won't it? You've got a weird sense of humor, Yuri Bird. I like that. I guess I wouldn't feel so nervous about going home if you went with me. I might even have a good time. When you're there, you feel closer to the stars. They look so clear and bright. I'd love to show you. <laughs> I look forward to it. I bet we'll even see some of the stars you taught me about. And maybe I'll finally lay eyes on that constellation you told me about. A fishing rod, was it? Little Lysithia. These ears miss nothing, you know. What are you on about this time? Is it true that Count Ordelia plans to relinquish his title eventually? Yes, but why are you asking? 
I approve, that's all. Throwing off the shackles of nobility to live freely? It's a beautiful thing. I would ask that you refrain from painting them with the same brushstrokes that you so liberally paint yourself with. My mother and father will carry on with all the associated duties befitting of nobles. Only after that will they retire. Got it. And that's completely different from someone like me who tapped out of the nobility game, right? Your parents are exemplary nobles, that's for sure. I respect that you support them as much as you do. Would you just stop? You're embarrassing me. Can't be helped. Meant every word. If anyone should have red cheeks, it's me, given the choices I've made. I'm sure you had your reasons. Of course. Still, it is a bit cowardly of me not to stand up to my family a bit more. Honestly, it's since getting to know you that I've started thinking along those lines. One day soon, I'll return to that house. My reception will be chilly at best. Still, it must be done. My house is full of low lowlifes. But it also has my little bro, who took over when I left. He's good people. Even with the difficulties in Leicester, our house is still going strong. That's his doing. That's why I've decided that it's time to talk to him about what can be done to help Count Ordelia. Repaying your perceived debt would be nice, sure. But it sounds like you intend to foist your responsibility onto your little brother. Ah, but the two aren't related. This is just the right thing to do. I'm still pondering how best to fulfill my vow. Uh-huh. Well, you don't believe me, do you, little lady? Just, what exactly are you planning on in terms of this repayment? After your family relinquishes their noble titles, I'll support them so that you can all live in peace. Even though you're a lowlife? That may be true, and it is, but consider this. I've seen life from both sides, as a noble and a vagabond. When their situation changes, they'll face new challenges. I'm the perfect guy to help them through. You're irresponsible and unreliable. But clearly, you're not a bad person. And your support would be most appreciated. Just so you're aware, however, we have no means with which to pay you. So, are you sure you're still willing to follow through with this? I wasn't planning on doing this for a payout, but if you really insisted on a thank you gift... Well, you could always accept me into your family. Then paying me wouldn't be a consideration. Excuse me? Just what are you insinuating? Don't think too hard about it just yet. I still have lots of debts to pay and affairs to settle. In the meantime, let's just stick close together. Yeah? Yeah! Come at me! Balthus, you mustn't draw the enemy in so... Pray do not sacrifice yourself on my account. Enough of that. Just watch my back like we planned. A thousand pardons, then. Whew, it's been a while since we had such a close fight. How you holding up? You didn't seem like your heart was really in it this time. I had some difficulty knowing the torment our enemy was going through. Bad enough to fall in combat, but to be felled by one so base as I. Oh, if they regret anything, it's that you're worried about their humiliating defeat. Ego burn right there. You know, it wasn't so bad fighting at your side. They make a pretty good team, you and I. It is because you have the courage to face your enemies head on, leaving your flanks unguarded. And the generosity to allow less skilled fighters the glory of dispatching foes who take the bait. Every aspect of your tactics is a reflection of your incomparable virtue. You have a way of understanding a situation, but also twisting it all up in your head. Impressive, really. The unrivaled king of grappling himself, that'd be me, trusted you enough to watch his back. Can't you just be proud and leave it at that? The nickname is a difficult one to respect, though the man inhabiting it is more than worthy. Hmm. If what I have said today has offended, which I would not doubt, then accept my humblest apologies. 
<laughs> you really are something else, you know that? I like your style, pal. I could see us teaming up as mercenaries and wandering from battlefield to battlefield. Admit it. That would be a grand old time, don't you think? It would depend on the circumstances. Might I impose on you to come with me? Right, there's always... Wait, what? Okay, we're here. Care to explain? Must you make a mockery of everything? I have my own dream to pursue, not this twaddle! You assume I'd abandon the restoration of House Nouvelle to... to become a vagrant? Are you mad? Even among your fabled transgressions, this goes beyond the pale. Definitely a fair-weather friend, that one. Why did you bring me here? It's so isolated. That would be the point. Yikes. See you around, B. Uh, hang on a second. Out here, in a place like this, you should be free to sigh, yeah? What do you mean by that? I just thought it would do you well to cut loose and sigh to your heart's content. Really? You found a nice quiet place where you could annoy me without putting bystanders at risk? Ah, why does this always happen? That's not what I meant. This is me doing something nice for you. You said before that you can't ever relax because you're worried about endangering others. A lot's been going on recently, so let her rip already. Sigh until you can sigh no more. That's nice of you. A chance to relax and sigh as I please. Sounds good. But what do we do about the monsters? What do you think? A monster shows up, I punch it in the nose. Done deal. By yourself? I'm never alone, pal. These two fists are always by my side. And they never let me down. Oh, right. It doesn't have to be here if you have performance anxiety, but anytime you accidentally call a monster, just holler and I'll punch it to next Tuesday. In fact, maybe it's best if you just stick by my side from now on. Do that and you're free to sigh whenever the urge strikes. Why would I have to stay by your side? Not a lot of people in this world can knock out a beast without breaking a sweat. I'm one of them. And since I'm always on the run from bounty hunters, I'm an exceptionally light sleeper. You expect me to sleep by your side too? Ooh, this may be my best idea yet. If I'm always with a monster summoner, fewer people will come after my bounty. <laughs> this is brilliant. Ah, <sighs> never change, B. You're so predictable. Ah. <sighs> All right, have fun. Have fun. That's an odd thing to do. <laughs> Monsters, they're everywhere! <laughs> this is gonna be a blast! It's hard not to like that dummy. Oh, what's the use? Even with all I've learned, I still don't understand! Hello, Constance. I hope I'm not interrupting. Not at all. I was just in need of a sympathetic ear. I found a magical scroll, which, unless I am mistaken, should relieve me of my woes. Oh, wonderful! Not so fast. The magic within this scroll is a type I have neglected to study. It pains me to admit this, but it may take decades of going back to the basics to grasp it. Decades? That's a long time to spend with your nose buried in an old piece of parchment. Why must the goddess dangle a solution before me, only to cruelly pull it away? There's no need to despair. To tell the truth, I like you just as you are. You do? Why? Those low moods of mine have never done anyone the least bit of good. You're like a little sister to me. Nothing you do will change that. Not even a little bit. 
Really? Of course, you're my sweet Constance, and I like you just as you are. I... I see. Perhaps my moods are not the great burden I thought they were. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pressure you. No matter what decision you make, I support you. I felt no pressure, I assure you. It's more that I feel embarrassed to have been embarrassed. I'd put so much effort into finding a magical means to alleviate myself that it never occurred to me that maybe all I needed was to accept myself. What will you do with the scroll you found? Oh, I'll continue to research it, for research's sake if nothing else, but I may have no need of it. It's not as if these moods of mine have ever hampered my efforts to restore my house. And I am as a sister to you, no matter which face I present, yes? Nothing, no mood, no foe, no obligation, will keep me from honoring my sisterly duty to protect you. <laughs> we can protect each other. Good, it is settled. Now we can begin the hard work of reclaiming our titles. Absolutely. We'll become sister sages and restore our houses to their former glory. You understand the plan perfectly. If we walk this path together, it can only end in triumph. <laughs>